Number 11. Bull Rock. Bull Rock is an abandoned island located just 5.6 miles off the coast of County Cork, Ireland. But the first thing you might notice about Bull Rock is that it's covered in steep, rocky cliffs. In fact, it looks almost entirely inhospitable. But people actually used to live there, carving out their homes from the rock face. But who they were, no one knows. Living on a cliff face would not be easy. There is also a deserted lighthouse on the island, as well as a tunnel that allows boats to pass through. According to legend, the tunnel is a gateway to the underworld, and it's hard to pass through unless the weather is good. The lighthouse was built in 1889 as a replacement for a lighthouse that was located on nearby Calf Island before it was destroyed in a storm. From 1901 to 1991, up to seven lighthouse operators lived on Bull Rock at any given time. They left when an automatic lighting system was installed and they were no longer needed. Bull Rock Island is open to visitors, but getting there is somewhat of a challenge. The only way to reach it is by boat, and there is no way for the boat to dock. But it's perfect for those who are looking for an enchanted experience in a seemingly forbidden land. Number 10. Vanderbilt Tennis Club as many as 750,000 commuters pass through New York City's iconic Grand Central Terminal every day, many, if not most of them, are unaware that there is a hidden tennis facility and ski slope on the third level, behind the building's famous vaulted windows. During the 1960s, a Hungarian immigrant named Geza A. Gazdag founded the Vanderbilt Athletic Club, which he named after the original station's builder, Cornelius Vanderbilt, millionaire. Gazdag had two clay tennis courts installed as well as a 65-foot ski slope, but the space was ultimately neglected, and by 1980, it had fallen into disrepair. Donald Trump actually took over the facility in 1984 and turned it into a high-end tennis club for those who could afford to shell out $155 per hour to play. Then, in 2009, it was closed down to make room for a Metro North employee lounge. A new ceiling was installed, creating a fourth floor where new tennis courts were built in 2011. Today, the club is open to the public, but it remains rather obscure. Rumor has it that even some of the employees at Grand Central are unaware of it or don't know exactly where it is. Number 9. Devil's Bridge You might expect something called the Devil's Bridge to look terrifying, but this arched structure, located in Kromlau, Germany, is set against the serene backdrop of lush foliage and is not scary at all. Built in Kronlauer Park during the mid-19th century, the bridge was purposely built so that its reflection forms a perfect circle in the water below. Like several other bridges throughout Europe, it got its name from the superstitious belief that Satan must have had a hand in its construction since it appears almost miraculous. It's too beautiful to almost be real. But it was built by human hands using locally sourced stone after a local knight commissioned it in 1860. The bridge is more pleasing to the eye than it is practical since it's kind of delicate. It's near the Polish border, roughly a two-hour drive from Berlin. Visitors are welcome, but for the sake of preservation, nobody is allowed to cross the Devil's Bridge. Number 8. A Royal Waiting Room The Stazione Centrale, or the Central Station, is the main railway station in Milan, Italy. Over 300,000 people pass through it daily, with most paying no mind to a series of closed doors that they walk right past. Behind those doors is a lavish waiting room called the Royal Pavilion. It was added onto the station in 1926 at the urging of Italy's Minister of Communications, Costanzo Ciano. He thought it would be a good idea to create an elegant waiting space for the country's royal family, the Savoyas, who traveled by train to their countryside palace. Must be nice. Italy's monarchy ended immediately following World War II, but the Royal Pavilion still exists. It consists of two floors, the first of which is situated at ground level. It's filled with empty rooms that were once covered in fascist symbols, but the imagery was removed after the war. The upper floor features a series of different marble interiors, as well as royal emblems, high-end furniture, and a balcony overlooking the public square. There are swastikas engraved into the wood flooring as an embellishment meant to impress Hitler if he ever dropped by, although he never visited the station. And there is also a small bathroom where a large mirror conceals a ladder leading to an emergency escape route. The Royal Pavilion is hardly ever open to the public, so most people have never seen it firsthand, 
and most don't even know that it's there. Number 7. Secret Chambers at Drum Castle In 2013, archaeologists working at Drum Castle in Aberdeenshire, Scotland discovered a secret chamber. It was found on the first floor of the 700-year-old medieval structure, where it was hidden by 19th-century bookshelves. The team already knew that there were several passages throughout the castle that had been blocked off when a library was built during the 1840s. This much was evident based on the fact that there are windows on the outside of the castle that couldn't be seen from the inside. But they didn't expect to find a perfectly preserved room that had sat untouched for at least 150 years. It still has its original doorway and toilet. Shortly after announcing the discovery, the archaeologists found another secret chamber. They initially suspected that it was the infamous space where Queen Mary Irvine hid her brother for three years after his defeat at the Battle of Culloden in 1746. According to rumors, she deceptively guided the British redcoats away from the castle while he was in there. But this turned out not to be the case. After sending in a remote video camera, it became clear that the chamber had a more ordinary use, perhaps as a butchery and or a kitchen. King Robert the Bruce gifted Drum Castle to the Irvine family in 1323, and it remained in their possession until 1975, when it fell into the hands of the National Trust for Scotland. It is the oldest building under the organization's care. Number 6. Haiku Stairs there is a steep outdoor staircase nicknamed the Stairway to Heaven nestled in the mountains of the Hawaiian island of Oahu. Also known as the Haiku Stairs, this structure consists of 3,922 steps that once led to a top-secret U.S. Navy facility called the Haiku Radio Station, which was used for transmitting radio signals to Navy ships throughout the Pacific. After the naval base was decommissioned during the 1950s, it functioned as a base for Omega, the first ever global range radio navigation system. Around that time, the wooden steps that originally made up the Haiku stairs were replaced with the metal steps and ramps that remain today. The staircase was once open to the public, but it attracted too many curious visitors for the government's comfort level, and in 1987, both the Haiku stairs and the station were closed. In 2003, the city of Honolulu paid $875,000 to repair the stairs, with plans to reopen them to the public. But that never happened, and in 2018, the city made it clear that it never will, due to safety concerns. Trespassing has been a constant problem. Officials estimate that thousands of people have carelessly walked right past the no trespassing signs and ignored warnings that they could face a $1,000 fine for going any further. The hike offers stunning views of the landscape and a nearby bay, and it's proven nearly impossible to keep people out. Sadly, the haiku stairs will not exist for much longer. Realizing that there's only one way to get the trespassing to stop, the fed-up Honolulu City Council voted to remove the staircase, and the mayor has given the green light. Would you want to see these stairs? Have you ever been there? Let me know in the comments below! Number 5. Little Compton Street London is filled with literal layers of history, one era built on top of another, that have accumulated over many centuries as the street level grew higher. In the middle of Charing Cross Road, there is a nondescript traffic island that offers a rare first-hand glimpse into the city's past. Beneath a metal grate, there is a wall with the words Little Compton Street embedded in tile. This is the name of the road that ran through the area at least as far back as the 1790s. Back then, the bustling area was home to one of London's most notorious slums. A public house called Coach and Horses once sat along Little Compton Street. It was demolished in 1886 to make room for the paving of Charing Cross Road. An office tower was eventually built where Little Compton Street once stood, and the former road was converted into a utility tunnel. But not everyone agrees that the signs beneath the road mark a buried street. A detective blog dedicated to solving mysteries like this, called Marmont Road, found evidence that the signs beneath the grate may have been put there to help utility workers navigate underground tunnels. For now, nobody can say for sure, but it's clear that the signs are old and that they represent just one of London's many buried historical features. Number 4. The Underground City of Nowers The Underground City of Nowers is a mysterious underground cave system in France. It's about 72 feet underground and has at least 300 chambers. It began life as a limestone quarry built by the Romans in the 2nd century AD. 
but when it was abandoned, ancient people used it as storage. The local people discovered the temperature was perfect for preserving goods inside the deep tunnels. During the Middle Ages, it became a place of refuge. As fighting and battles increased, the underground city was the perfect place to hide. At its peak, the underground city had a population of about 3,000 people. Over the years, people added wells, stables, bakeries, and chapels. They planned things extremely well, and the chimneys from the baker's ovens and any other fires were routed through buildings above ground, so no one would have any clue as to what was going on below. Evidence also suggests that in the 9th century AD, Viking invaders let themselves into the underground settlement and just decided to stay there. The city remained in use until Europe became a little more stable and it was no longer needed. The secret city was then abandoned and not rediscovered until 1887, when a man renovating his house found a mysterious hole in his wall that led down into the city. A very similar story to the discovery of Darien Kuyu in Turkey. Did you know about this city in France or were you surprised? Let me know in the comments below. Number 3. Eiffel Tower Apartment Shortly after the Eiffel Tower was completed in 1889, word leaked that its designer, civil engineer Gustave Eiffel, had a private apartment built for himself near the top of the structure. It's a small but cozy space, and it was originally decorated in a simple style that Eiffel favored. Situated nearly 1,000 feet in the air, the apartment was equipped with wooden cabinets, several desks, a kitchen, a bathroom with a separate toilet cubicle, and even a grand piano. It was surrounded by an open-air balcony. Eiffel wanted it to be appealing to scientists, so he filled an adjacent space with scientific equipment. Parisian socialites were green with envy when they heard about Eiffel's apartment. He reportedly received numerous offers from elites hoping to rent it from him, but he declined them all. He just wanted to make everybody jealous. After all, he had the cozy abode put there for his own use as a reflection space and for entertaining prestigious company like Thomas Edison. The apartment didn't even have a bedroom, because it wasn't meant to be lived in. Today, it's open to the public for tours, offering a long-awaited glimpse into the high-demand space that the Eiffel Tower's designer awarded himself for his hard work. Number 2. Devil's Hole Cave Everyone's heard of the world-famous Niagara Falls, but many visitors completely miss the opportunity to visit the little-known Devil's Hole State Park. Nicknamed the Cave of the Evil Spirits, these limestone caves are carved into the side of the Niagara Gorge and can be found just down the road from the falls. Getting there requires a potentially dangerous climb down a stone staircase to the Niagara River. The Cave of the Evil Spirits has a long history of being haunted. While passing through in 1763, a British wagon train was attacked by 500 Seneca natives in what became known as the Devil's Hole Massacre. Afterward, the bodies of around 80 British soldiers were found floating in the river. The Senecas warned the British that if they trespassed again in the future, they would be plagued by tragedy and misfortune. According to modern-day superstition, anyone who removes a rock from the site will suffer in similar ways. Number 1. Trafalgar Square Police Station London's famous Trafalgar Square is home to the city's smallest police station, which is barely bigger than a phone booth. In fact, it's easy to walk past it without even noticing. It's cleverly hidden inside an ornamental light fitting, and the only clue to its presence is an inconspicuous door on the outside. Built in 1926, the tiny station was installed into the hollowed-out fixture as a watch post where police could keep an eye on protesters and demonstrators. It could hold up to two prisoners at a time if need be, but was primarily used for performing surveillance on unsuspecting bystanders. Inside, there was a direct telephone line to Scotland Yard in case the lone officer on patrol needed to call for backup. Anytime someone picked up the phone, the light on top of the station started flashing like a beacon to alert any nearby officers that there was trouble nearby. The first police station at Trafalgar Square was a temporary structure that was built after the Bloody Sunday riots of 1887, when 10,000 rioters took to the street to protest unemployment and coercion in Ireland. After World War I, plans were made to renovate the building, but the public objected to its presence, so the police got rid of it and replaced it with the less noticeable One Man Command Center. Thanks for watching! If you'd like to learn about more secret historical places, let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!